congestive heart failure. Congestive heart failure is a clinical syndrome where there is congestion of both the pulmonary as well as the systemic circulation. Here, the myocardial contractility of the heart is lost and that is why there is problem in both the systole and diastolic function of the heart. There are several pathological conditions which can lead to this congestive heart failure out of which there are four major pathological conditions. Number one is the pressure overload. Say for example, in case of systemic hypertension or aortic stenosis, pressure overload can happen. The volume overload can happen in case of valvular regurgitation. And number three is loss of viable myocardium. The myocardium loses its viability to undergo systole in case of chronic ischemic heart disease or myocardial infection. And the fourth one is generalized decrease in the myocardial contractility which happens especially in dilated cardiomyopathies. So because of this it reduces the functional ability of the heart and ultimately the cardiac output is reduced. The first compensatory mechanism is the heart since it is a congestive heart there is no proper functioning of the systole or diastole. It tries to overcome it by dilating the heart fully and coming back to the full system. According to the Starling's heart law, the force of contraction of the heart is directly proportional to the myocardial fiber length. The problem in congestive heart failure is the heart fails to contract fully so that the cardiac output is reduced. So what happens is for the, as a compensatory mechanism, the heart increases the preload and tries to make it up by the Sterling's heart law. That is when there is full diastole, it tries to give more force of contraction. That is Sterling's heart law. The force of contraction of the heart is directly proportional to the myocardial fiber length. So in case of congestive heart failure, this particular Sterling's heart law or Frank's Sterling's relationship applies. How it does it? The force of contraction is directly proportional to the myocardial fiber length. Whenever the more preload is there, what is preload? Preload is the volume or the load experienced by the ventricle before they undergo systole. That means the last stage of diastole, when the heart receives the blood at the last stage of diastole, before it contracts, how much pressure or how much load experienced by the myocardial cells or the ventricles? That we call it as preload. And afterload is against which pressure this particular blood has to be pumped from the ventricle. That pressure we call it as afterload. So when the preload is increased, there is a compensatory mechanism which leads to increase in the myocardial fiber length. So more relaxation or more fiber length leads to increased force of contraction of the heart. But there is a limitation. Why there is a limitation? Because whenever the preload is increased, there is a limitation that is the stroke, the pressure transmitted back to pulmonary circulation. Whenever more volume, the preload is increasing, the pressure will be transmitted. It causes pulmonary edema. That means into the pulmonary vasculature, it causes transudation in the pulmonary interstitial space. So thus leading to pulmonary edema. So to some extent only, it can cause increase in the stroke volume. But this adaptive mechanism has one limitation. It goes, the pressure increases and enters into the pulmonary vasculature, leading to transudation into pulmonary interstitial space, leading to pulmonary edema.